Working capital. Before we go into details in Excel, I would like to make a short intro so we are on the same page. So first of all, when we are talking about working capital, we have in mind four major groups of components. So we've got cash and equivalents, which we will not talk about because this is a little bit different uh, role in modeling. Then we've got inventory, receivables and liabilities. Inventory can be divided into four subgroups. So we've got uh, inventory of materials, a work in progress, then we've got finished products and goods that we trade. In receivables, we have payments in advance that we have paid and we wait for the deliveries. Then obviously we've got the biggest position, which are usually the trade receivables, receivables resulting from taxes and subsidies, other receivables, and obviously short-term accruals. And last but not least, the liabilities. We've got trade liabilities as the biggest usually position, then the prepayments we have received from other people, but we haven't delivered the goods or services. Liabilities resulting from salaries, which is also a big position, and liabilities resulting from taxes and charges. Last but not least, obviously, the accruals as well on the liability side. Those four major groups of components enable us to calculate the working capital, so how much money apart from the fixed asset we have to invest for the company to actually work and produce money for us. From the point of view of the flow of the data from sheet to sheet, what happens is basically we get the data from the PL position, especially PL, materials and energy, sales, external services, and other, and we turn them into a new sheet which we'll call working capital. There we generate separate positions that are later transferred to balance of sheet, and they are the current assets and the liabilities. And this way we will also almost automatically have uh, those positions generated. In most cases, we will be using some sort of a basis that we're going to use. It can be a sales operating cost or materials. Then we will have calculated uh, turnover rotation in days and we'll divide it by 365 to get to, to the valuation of the position. And usually what happens is that this has been calculated, the basis, earlier on. So we actually play with the rotation in days. So we wonder how we can improve it uh, so that the working capital is lower uh, or how we can extend, for example, payments term so the liabilities cover to a large extent the assets and the cash requirements. So you will see it how it works in practice in the later stages. When it comes to assumptions, we basically assume that uh, most things, uh, they remain on the same level of the, as the 2015. There are two differences, two major improvements that we expect. First of all, work in progress to go down by five days in 2018. And then inventory of finished products to go down by 10 days in 2018 as well. Obviously, we are talking about the turnover rotation in days. So let's see how it's going to look like in Excel. Estimating inventory position in working capital. So open the, the file financial model after all fixed assets that is attached to this lecture and let's try to estimate those positions which we've got here. So inventory of materials, work in progress, inventory of finished products and inventory of goods that are sold but not produced by us. So as you can see, we start with the first position, inventory of materials, and here our basis is the cost of materials. In the, our case, as you might remember, in a materials and energy sheet, we had uh, two positions. So we had the variable cost of materials, and then uh, we had also the cost of materials that is fixed. So this is summed here, so we put it also extended for 2016. And we have calculated the turnover rotation in days to be almost 60 days for the previous periods. As we know, the assumption is that it's not going to change. So we copy it here and uh, now we uh, just have to calculate the level that is expected given the cost of materials that we need for the sales to actually happen. So we take the, the cost of materials, we multiply it by this uh, turnover rotation dates, and then we divide by 365 and we got the estimation of the inventory we copy it for the rest and then we have it as well in the case of the work in progress the assumption is that we've got the same amount of um, the turnover rotation day days up to 18th where we reduce it by five so this is reduced by five here we take all the operating costs because work in progress usually has a bit of everything so we actually took it from uh, pnl because this is where we actually sum all of them so the, you've got not only materials but also external services payroll energy etc etc and also on the depreciation so we copy it here as well and we use exactly the same form formula so i can 
copy it from here, we copy it for the rest. Inventory of finished products is calculated exactly in the same way as the work in progress. The only difference is that we should go down by 10 days in 18th. So we go even lower here. And this is wrong because I've copied minus 10 for every date. And then we copy the formula here because it's the same. And we should be able to copy it here as well. And last but not least, inventory of goods sold. We're not going to sell them. So we actually copied the formula, but actually we assumed this to be zero. And it was actually zero previously as well in terms of rotation of days. So as you can see, we've managed to generate everything when it comes to the working uh, capital inventory positions. There's one more thing um, I have to add, uh, which I forgot. So inventory of finished products goes down in 18th by 10 days. But before that, in 17th, it actually goes up by five. So let's add five here. And then we have everything. So as uh, said previously, thanks to the playing with the turnover rotation days and basically having the levels that are generated in previous uh, sheets, we can easily model how much uh, working capital by positions we need here. It is just for the inventory. We'll go further on with the rest. Now let's try to estimate the receivables that will be a part of the working capital. So open the file financial model after working capital inventory and let's try to estimate each and every component. So we start first with the payments in advance for deliveries. As you can see in 2015, they were equal to zero. It's probably not conservatively speaking uh, wise to assume that this will be like this for next year. So let's maybe assume that uh, it will be rather closer to 1% of cost of materials and energy sold uh, the cost of materials and energy sold we take from the materials and energy and then we just need to calculate level of expected payments in advance so it will be 60 we copy it for next year's and then we have it the second thing is um, the trade receivables here we have two things first of all we divide them between the, the receivables from related entities luckily we don't have any related entities but if we had we would have to model them separately and then the receivables from other entities which is like companies that are not related to us in any way the other modification is actually that the sales when we took a look at the receivables there we also have a part of the VET because we sell to companies or to individuals uh, adding VAT and if they owe us money they also part of this is basically VAT so to get a, a good rotation we basically first have to increase the sales we had here by the VAT level and then on the basis of this as previously calculate the rotations in days we assume this to be on the same level then the sales are basically calculated uh, as a, a multiplication of net value and the um, VAT we've got the sales here we assume the VAT to be on the same level and then we have to calculate the receivables that uh, we would expect on the basis of this rotation so this will be basically the estimated levels plus the VT multiplied by the rotation divided by 365. In, in the case of the related companies, we assume that it's zero. And now we just have to have those two things added. So the receivables from the related and uh, other parties. So this is done and let's just copy it. Now, uh, when it comes to receivables resulting from taxes, again, instead of re rotation, we use a percentage of uh, sales so in our case it will be on the level of 2015 so one percent and then we basically multiply the sales by this and we get estimated level and the same goes for the other receivables so this will be the same formula and we get the results in the case of the short sum accruals, we assume the same level as in 2015. So this is basically the same for every year. So as you can see, we've managed to also finish the receivables part of the working capital. Now we'll be just left with the liabilities that we'll do in a minute. One thing we have to modify is basically that in payments, we have here 1%, one year at zero because we have copied the 2040 and then he's basically when we drag the, the formula he's uh, taking from 2015 for the 2017. So instead of this, let's do like this and then now it should be consistent. Let's finish modeling uh, working capital by uh, trying to estimate the liabilities that are related to working capital. So the first position obviously will be trade liabilities. As it was in the case of the trade receivables, we have to add the VAT. 
The problem with the VAT here is that actually we have a two groups of things we buy from other people. So some of them are have 7% VAT. So in our case, it will be just energy, whereas others are just 22%. So it will be materials, external services, other costs, value. So only after adding the VAT, we can properly estimate turnover rotation in days. So in our case, what we did was uh, we summarized the things which had the 22 VAT, then the ones which have 7% uh, VAT, and then we basically added the VAT here. So this is the cross value of the products and services bot. Now what happens for the forecast period, we basically copy this. We assume the same rotation of days and we will basically have to again multiply this by rotation, divide by 365 days to get the value we intended. And there we have it. Next points are prepayments for deliveries of sales. So in this case, this is estimated as a percentage of sales. So we've got the sales, a very low relative level of 0.1%. We know also that it will, in 2019, will be totally eliminated. So we will have to here put a zero, but let's first put the, the formula and then we'll just modify it on the go. So since 2019, it will be exactly 0%. So this is how we get the estimation of the prepayment for delivery. So the next point is related to liabilities resulting from salaries. So here, basically, it can be estimated as a percentage of the average salaries we pay. In our cases, uh, the historically, it was 31%. Uh, this is mainly due to the fact that you pay uh, different people at a different point of time. Some of them are being uh, paid weekly some of them are being paid after the end of the month sometimes it might be before the end of the month and then you also have the bonuses as well so on average is 31 percent we assume that this will not change and then the average month salary is basically total salaries paid divided by 12 bear in mind that we don't have the social contribution here it's just the salaries so we drag it here and then we multiply one by each other to get the estimation. And this is how we get the liabilities for salaries. Social securities and other public uh, paid items, they also cause some sort of a liabilities. And those liabilities we put here in the category liabilities resulting from taxes, charges, and social contribution. Here, usually we would assume that this is a monthly a monthly charge. So we pay monthly. So on average, we have a liabilities equal to monthly part of the, the, the taxes, since the, this is the annual model. If you had a model uh, where you would have a monthly, then it would be equal to the taxes you, you were supposed to be paid or uh, were calculated in the previous month. But here, since we work on an annual model, we will have part of the cost position. We have already average monthly social security. In the case of the security due to the law in Poland, you um, have to pay after two months. So this can be actually uh, even a little bit uh, bigger. So we put here this delay or percentage of the value you can be owing the, the state before you pay. And then taxes and fees are here annual. So we have to divide it by 12. So the total liabilities will be equal to monthly salary multiplied by uh, this 200 percentage plus the taxes divided by 12 plus the corporate tax divided by 12. We just have to drag those two, get the, everything in the right place and there you go.